Hello, Sky friends, and welcome to Seasons of Skyrend, Book 4. We're a custom 5e D&D adventure that focuses on the stories of our characters as they seek to change the world, and how the world responds in turn. I am your host and DM, Scott, and you can find me on Twitter at TheScottBlake. Hi, I'm Chris, and you can find me at EwokKiller on Twitter. I play Finnegan Finn Tempest, a tiefling trainer, which is a Skyrand original class supported by the Metalweave Games supplement Baby Beastry. Finn is the trainer of Cerulius, a blue guard drake. Hi, my name is Nate. You can find me on Twitter at Skyrand underscore Nate. I play Darvin Grimm, the human monk, and I am currently hosting Cade, the demigod of the land in my brain. Hi, I'm Shannon. You can find me on Twitter at Skyrend underscore Shannon. I play Aranus Gray, the god of rebellion, and I am a half-elf bard. You can also find the show on Twitter at Skyrend Podcast, and you can support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash Podcast. Head on over to find out about bonus chapters, early access, NPC creation, and more. Now then, thank you for joining us. And please enjoy this chapter in Seasons of Skyrend. After Darwin, we've got Malcius, who's not willing to give up this fight yet. He will, at this point, call through the church. You hear Malcius call out, Followers of Corum, your aid is needed. Come and serve Coram dutifully. Those who wish to desecrate our church must be stopped. And then he's going to try to attack Cyril again. Sue. So. Oh, only one of these is, a, is, a, is low. 12 is the low one. Okay. And then we jump up to 23 and 28 and 28. Okay, I'm going to take all of them, but I'm going to do the same thing I did last time and use my last level four spell slot to okay. hang him again. It's going to be 34 bludgeoning damage. Punch, punch, heal into Cyril's chest. Uh, and he ma- needs to make a dexterity saving throw? Yeah. Okay. 21. All right. As the head of this church, he is quite skilled. Yeah, but every little bit helps right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, 5d10 fire damage. uh, Some hearty chipping. Especially when I roll like that. It's 42. Before being halved? Mm Mm-hmm. Okay, so 21. Not bad, not bad. All right. Fire burns, as it always does. That's not pleasant. After Malcius, it's Ksenia, who is frightened now. They've got a couple more darts, and do they throw them up at you, or they go and rush and try to help with Cyril and Darvin? They're afraid. I think it makes sense for them to move to a different target, plus they'd have disadvantage on you anyway, since you're so far away. So let's make good use of this fear. Ksenia has a panicked look on her face, and she just heard Malcius' call for help. She charges forward and is going to attempt to strike Cyril with disadvantage on all of these attacks because of what Finnegan did. So, that's a 14. Miss. 19. Shit, with a disadvantage? I know. Damn. Well, the high was a 28 on that one. And 17. That'll hit. Okay. So two of those are going to get through. She's afraid, but she's, she's not looking at you. She knows you're there. She's still afraid. It's like, oh shit, this is his friend too. But every little bit helps. Cyril's going to take 20 bludgeoning damage. And yeah, she's going to try to knock Cyril prone too, just like she'd been doing with you. So Cyril can go ahead and make a dexterity saving throw. Oh, yay. 15? Cyril gets knocked prone. The, uh, what is this way called? The way of the open hand. Mm-hmm. It'd be quite fun with some of their open hand techniques, especially since they don't require any additional key points, just the flurry of blows. 
So hits Cyril. Cyril just collapses down to her chest. Still huge and imposing, but makes her a little bit easier to hit. That's all that she can do. Then it's Dew's turn. Darvin, Dew is coming at you again. Cool boy. How are you doing health-wise, buddy? Almost dead. Let's see, a 12 doesn't hit, does it? Nope. How about a 15? Nope. Dirty 20. Yes, that will hit. Okay, so will the other dirty 20. We'll do these attacks one at a time, just so we know which one, if either of them knocks you prone, or knocks you out. 11 bludgeoning damage. Yikes, not quite. And... Hmm, 7 bludgeoning damage. I'm at 11 health. Okay, and since that didn't knock you out, go ahead and make a dexterity saving throw. See if you get knocked prone. They still want to just smack you down. A crit. Oh, not today. Not today, do. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> the closer he gets to death, the more powerful he becomes. It's Hades' turn. They just knocked Arnus 15 feet away. They're going to charge Arnus and try to do that shit again. So, Arnus, here's some attacks. Couple with the staff. Oh, God. I'm going to start with the high because this was terrible. A 15. That's a big nope, buddy. Oh, that's two big swings with the quarter st- or with the staff. Two big staff swings. Whoosh, whoosh. And they try to kick and just nothing gets through. A for effort. F for results. Uh, he's breathing hard in front of you. Uh, what do you want to do, Arnis? I say it, but I'm like, oh, oh, over here? Over there? <laughs> can't see me. <laughs> I can see you just... <laughs> I don't know, maybe oh. not. I don't know. Oh, what do I want to do? Oh, they're right up next to me again, huh? Yeah, yeah. And this. Okay. <laughs> can't do anything when people are right next to me. Literally, can... Literally can't do anything to this dude. I could stab him with a dagger. That's literally all I can do. You can't make him laugh again? I guess I could. I guess I could you take could. him back down. You could vicious mock? I could do that, too. Make him laugh. You take him out of the fight for a little while, yeah. too. Potentially. Yeah, I'll go ahead and toss his hideous laughter this fool again. See if it works the second time. Ay, ay, ay. Saving throw, right? Yep. Wisdom. <laughs> There's a 19 on the die. God damn it. Sorry. Then what I do this turn is absolutely goddamn nothing. Well, that matches the absolute nothing he did. We are not There's a chuckle. He just says, not today. Not this time. No. Finnegan. Flying Finnegan. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. I'm going to target Malsius this time. Mm-hmm. Um, with a level three ray of sickness. Ooh. If I pull this off, I will poison him. Uh huh. Is this a single target ranged spell mm-hmm. attack? Awesome. Yep. He gets. He. Oh, fuck. No, I don't do that because I know not to do that. Why is that? Because I have a monk in my party and I know better. Uh, well, it's a spell attack. Still, he's going to get like super advantages against dodging it. I don't know what I do. I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm not going to do it against Malsius. Hmm. I'm going to do it against uh, the dude who's fighting Arnus. Ah, Haiti. Wonderful. He's got his back turned and everything. All right. Oh, fucking, you kidding me? It was a crit, and then it rolled over to a one. Ooh, that was rough. Yeah, Haiti sees this green splash of energy smack into the ground next to him. Anything else, Finn? I, I got nothing else. All right. Then Cyril. She's going to take her two hits on Malsius, hopefully. Okay, she's going to un No, fuck herself. this. She's going to hit the bitch who came up behind her. Oh, going after Ksenia. Yeah. Dirty 20 on the first one. Oh, yeah. That hits. And a 28 on the second one. Ooh. Cyril does not like to be touched. Ooh. 17 total. 17 total. All right. And then... She's going to burrow down into the ground. Ah, we're playing whack a cereal again. Wonderful. 
it's a strategy and she's reached a it health is. point level where she's like nope that's a fair fair point <laughs> all right after cyril is trusting and ananda darvin's no longer prone darvin east these two civilians are going to attempt to join forces and grapple you and just I was going to say they're both going to grab a leg, but you have a leg sword, so that's a dumb idea. One of them is going to grab your leg, Ananda, while Trostin jumps up and tries to grab your arm, and they're going to try to ping you down, so that way Do and Malsius can take care of business. So make an athletics or an acrobatics check to not be grappled. Okay, we're going to go acrobatics, because I'm better at that. Mm -hmm. I got a 16. Uh, they partnered up and got a 20. Don't. I don't think one of them could have succeeded, but with the help. Trostin distracting you by jumping up and grabbing onto your arm, Ananda was able to snatch onto your leg. Grapple. Grapple. Your speed becomes zero. Well, that's it. Your speed becomes zero. It ends if the grappler is incapacitated. Also ends if an effect removes the grappled creature from the reach of the grappler. All right, so you're not going anywhere. What is it? It's Oh, it's restrained. That gives other creatures advantage. They will need another round in order to try to restrain you. I don't know if they even can, but for now, it's just grappled. Awesome. And then, Darvin, it's your turn. There's these two um, civilians just holding on to you. You can attack either one of them. You can attack Do, but you can't move anywhere. The... Screw it. Let's attack Do. All right. Uh, first attack of the leg sword is a 17. That's not going to hit. Second is a 19. Oh, that'll hit, yeah. For nine damage. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm going to flurry to throw a couple punches. All right, with that free hand. Uh, uh. Oof. For a 15. No. And a 17. Also, no. 25% success rate. That was a rough Ooh. one. That's all I got. Okay. Malsius sees that Cyril has disappeared under the ground, burrowed into a little tunnel. Sees Trostin and Ananda holding you, Darvin. Trostin, Ananda. Very well done. I shall lift your name's decorum in praise. Mr. Grimm, I will give you an opportunity now to repent for your ways and comply with what is demanded of you you can either tell me who it is that is in this way of obligate mortality or who told you about them in the first place just information or you may provide more of yourself so that we we can create more pendants and fully protect our church and our community a simple offering of the mind or of the body. Your choice, Mr. Grimm. What do you say, Darvin? Choose neither. <laughs> I'm disappointed. But very well. We will get what we need from you one way or another. And then he's going to hit you. He's going to hit you uh, hopefully all the times, but we'll see. Oh, crit fail's going to miss. Two's going to miss. Uh, let's move up. All right. 19 versus AC, Darwin. Yeah, that'll hit. Okay. Eight bludgeoning damage. Still up? Down to three. All right. Well, the next one is a 25 versus AC. That will hit. 15 damage. Okay. I'm going to spend a key point to not be dead. All right. So you drop down to one instead, right? Yeah. How are you doing on key points, by the way? I have 11 after this. Okay. Still a healthy amount. He hits you square across the face, knowing that you should go down. Sees your head pop back up. Expected nothing less from you, Master Grimm. But we've got time. Is the end of his turn. In which case, it's Dew's turn. No, sorry, it's Ksenia's turn. Who had just hit Cyril who's vanished down a hole. She's still afraid of Finnegan. 
she want to stay with Darwin or go help out Haiti? She's going to stay with Darwin. Whether you like it or not, Darwin, your body is very valuable, having been blessed by Coram and all. So she's going to make some attacks against you. All right. Does a 17 hit? Yes. All right. That's another punch across the face. Are you spending another key point? Yep. Okay. And then a 22 as she Oof. slugs you in the stomach. Yep. Darvin's body can take a licking, but it is rough to watch. Finnegan and Arn, as if you can see this, which I'm sure you can, they're just laying into him. Those attacks were all made with a disadvantage, right? Oh, that's, that's a very good point. Um, no, they weren't. <laughs> Two of them missed, and I will leave those as misses, but the two that hit, let's find out. Um, uh, the extra dice that I rolled were higher than those two, so uh, those, oh. those attacks got through. I apologize. I'll be better at that next time. Okay. Does she get a chance to save again? At the end of her turn, yeah. Okay. I think I forgot to do that last time, so we'll do it this time. That's a six on the die. She's still afraid. <laughs> nice. Dew's turn. It's going to keep it Darwin. I'm sorry, buddy. This is a trial of the flesh. There's a crit fail. There's a two. All right. A 17 hits. Yes? Yes. And the 26. Yes. That's two more strikes that come through. Just Eight. heavy hands from Dew. We're no, down to seven. Down to seven key points. Really almost dead here. It is Hades' turn. Um, Aranus. Can I attack you with the staff? Well, the crit fail is going to miss. I've rolled so many of those tonight. But these are monks, so I'm getting because a lot of rolls. you've rolled so many dice. The four is going <laughs> to miss. Um, does an 18 hit? It's on the money. All right. He's going to smack you once for minimum damage. Take six. And make another strength saving throw. Crit failed. You get knocked back another 15 feet. You got the, the wall of this main room. 10 feet behind you now. You're a good 30 feet away from the action at this point. And it's your turn, Arnis. All right, I'm going to cast Mass Cure Wounds. Okay, okay. And because I'm not doing any damage with my Divine Charges, I'm going to spend another four and make it do max. All right, so that's another 29, 29 HP for, I guess, just Darwin and Finnegan, since uh, Cyril's in the ground. I'll I'll take mine back. Oh, yeah, yeah, you, of course. Um, This is just a sphere centered on a point. It doesn't say I have to be able to see them. Right, but Cyril is physically in the ground. Okay. I, I know, it, it cuts both ways. She is protected, but that means she's also, like, out of range. She's not a tunnel, like, she doesn't make tunnels. She burrows like a mole. So there's, like, earth and stuff, or stone and stuff behind her. That's it. That's my whole turn. Okay. Everybody get your health? <sighs> mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. After Arnus, Finnegan. All right. I'm going to try my wand again and hope this does something good. Okay. Who are you targeting? The same one I've been targeting. All right. Senya. So four. Oh, this will help. Uh, slowing Ray. Make, oh, except it's a dexterity save. So go ahead and make it, and you're going to make it. We'll see. I've had plenty of crit fails tonight. Um, that only comes to a 13. Jeez. Nice. Not, not so hot tonight. her speed is halved for a minute. I will start uh -huh. a second die for that. I've got a die running for the other one, too. So. Ah, nice. And a die for my being in the air, which I need to change over to four. Uh, speed is half for a minute. In addition, can't take reactions. And can either take an action or a bonus action, but not both. Oof. You can repeat the save at the end of the turn, so it slows her down a little. Yeah. Fewer attacks coming out. Oh, yeah, yeah. And no flurry. No flurry. Nice, 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 nice. So now she needs... Not what I wanted, but it'll help. Yeah. It's a nice grab bag of a wand. Like, some of these are like, oh, that's decent. That helps a little bit. And some of them are just like, get bent. I was hoping for a get bent, but I'll take the that helps. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's my turn. Okay. Where does Cyril pop out from? What does she want to do? Mm. Or is she staying hidden? No, she's going to pop up and keep 
pressing the advantage against Yesenia. Not Yesenia. Yeah, that's right. No? That's Yesenia? Wrong. I don't know what it is. There it is. It's close. It rhymes. All right. Okay. Yesenia. She's slow and afraid, and now a drake is popping out of the ground to tail whip her. 21 for the first roll. Oh, yeah. And 24 for the second roll. Oh, yeah. Oh, that is max damage. 24 bludgeoning damage. Ouch. God damn. Like, taking her to her knees, that hurt. It was unexpected. Is Cyril popping back down? Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Before Ksenia can even turn around and see who's hitting her, just... Rubble. Fuck. She is freaking out. She's slowed. Just, I don't know. I don't know. After Cyril, it's it's Ananda, Proston. We're just going to maintain this grasp on Darvin. Darvin, you could use an action to try to escape the grapple, but if you'd rather use those for attacks, that's definitely your call. Yep. But it is your turn. You've just been uh, rejuvenated a little bit by Aranis, uh, and you're still being held by these civilians. Okay. No, they're, um, they're combatants at this point. They are. They are. Yeah. I'm just trying to emphasize the fact that these are just people who were in the church at the time and was like, all right, let's go. Yeah, no, they chose to fight. Whatever happens to them, it is their fate. <laughs> I agree, but I'm still going to focus on the main threat. Well, the more main threat, not the main main threat. Who are you going for? Who is Do. Do. All right, Do is right there next to you. Absolutely. Okay, first attack is a dirty 20. That hits. For 10. Mm-hmm. Ooh, second is a 26. That hits. For 12. Even grappled, Darwin is a force. Then we're going to throw a punch, just one, because I need mm-hmm. key points. 25. That hits. 11 damage. Darwin, do you want to kill Do? Mm, yeah, I think so. <sighs> so. You're being held by these two, and just with one free sword leg and one free arm, Slash, slash, punch. Where are you hitting them? Like the the temple. Okay. So the two slashes cause them to like, droop down, fall to the knees, heads just right there in punching range. Bam! And they go down. Hey, Darvin. Don't Yeesh. you have, a, don't you have a, a monk thing that lets you get temp HP mm-hmm. when someone dies? Oh, yeah, I get temps. It's been I a forgot. very long time since we've done that. <laughs> It has. How many temps do I get? I don't remember. I just okay, thought I'll now might be it. a good time to bring it up. Thank you. I probably would have forgot, honestly. Touch of death. You gain temp hit points equal to your wisdom modifier plus your monk level. Ooh. Oh my. Oh, shit. That's going to be a good, like, 20 plus points at this point. Uh, How many temps are you getting, Darren? Okay, wisdom mod is two. Mm-hmm. Plus monk level? Yeah. So, 17. That's some good temps right there. Yeah. Nice. And Chris says I'm trying to kill y'all. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Malcius sees this and he is pleased. He's like, ah, oh, do will find their reward with Corum, of course. Mr. Grimm, you continue to impress. Okay. And in response, he's going to make his attacks against you again. You're impressive, but you haven't surrendered yet. Let's count that two out. 16. No. 24. Yes. 25. Yes. Okay. Let's just get a couple of these in. 26 bludgeoning damage. Okay. Adios temps. Adios temps. And then, hang on, I'm bad at math. Okay. Okay, got it. No more temps, and I'm down to 20. Sounds good, sounds good. Ksenia's turn, she is frightened and slow. So really all she can do, Darvin, is just make her two attacks. She's got the extra attack. Both with disadvantage, so. Gonna try to hit you with this baton. Oh, wow. 24 on the first attack. Oof. 
have to put this crit aside. But a 19. Shit. Yes. 22 damage. Yikes. Okay, so I have to spend another key point. Drop back down to one. Yep. Malcia says, See, Darwin, you struggle and you struggle, but we are in the right in Coram's eyes. We shall prevail. Do is dead. Hey, D. Aranus, hey, D's gonna rush at you again and just try to keep hitting you with the staff. Haiti was on fire this time. The low on that is a 23, and then a 25, and then a crit. Yeah, I'm going to have to take it all. Can't even shield it. That's going to come to 33 bludgeoning damage, and make another strength saving throw as he attempts to bash you up against the wall now. I got a 15. Arnis gets slammed back against the wall. Mm. And it's your turn, Aranus. This guy's now ten feet in front of you. Hang on, I'm reading something. That's fair, that's fair. Right. I'm gonna try to Eldritch Blast. Did I hear Eldritch Blast? Sorry, I'm gonna try to Eldritch Blast this person again. We'll see how that goes. Okay. Let's do it. Sorry, do is dead. Let's Hades it. Aha. Alright. Oh, I guess maybe it's not so bad. Well, the two on the die is probably going to miss. It comes to a 12. Yeah, it's not going to hit. But then I got a 16 and a 28. Those hit. Hades has a lower AC than the others. He's a lower level monk than the others, but still much better than Ananda and Trostan. So go for it. Pew pew. 12. Okay. Anything else, Arnis? That's it. All righty. Finnegan, Tempest of the Skies. Do is down. Ksenia... Ksenia needs to make those saves again. Sorry. I forgot to do that at the end of her last. She's no longer slow, but she's still afraid. Finnegan, you're up in the sky. Do is dead. Ksenia and Malcius are working Darwin while those two civilians hold him. Okay. Let's try this. I'm going to use a Scorching Ray. Mm. Done that yet. And... I get to hurl three rays. Um, I'm going to shoot the first one at my current favorite target and see if that hits. Okay. It's an 18. That hits. Yeah, you hit her right in the back. So that's two D6s of fire. It's three. Nothing there. Next one to her again. It's a 17. That one does not hit. Found her AC with the first one. Okay. Well, we'll try the last one and see if it does anything. That's going to be a 26. Okay. Yeah, that hits. That's better. That's 11 damage. Whew. God, how is she still up? Uh, only only just barely. Only just barely. <laughs> I feel like I have I've a feeling that... for like 500 at this point, I swear. If that second right. one would have hit, I think she would have been ga- gone. Like, there's burn holes in her robes and singe marks on her hands. Well, let's see if Cyril can fin- finish her off. All right, so Cyril's going to pop up right at, at her feet, huh? Mm-hmm. Go, girl. Oh, fuck yes, that's a crit. It's about goddamn time. Ooh, you just want to go ahead and give the damage for us here, see if she goes down? It's 11 damage. She's dead if Cyril wants to kill her. Oh, fuck yes, she is. All right, so it's a tail whip that kills her. Mm -hmm. Just like right across the back. She crumples down. There's a snapping sound. And then Cyril's going to go to Malcius. All right. For her hit. Bounding around either Ananda or Trostan, neither of whom are going to take an attack of opportunity. They're holding. Wait, no, they're still holding Darwin, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. That's what they're going to do until they're told otherwise or until they're not. And they were doing it the last turn. So Cyril is going to swing at one of them. Oh, okay. 27. Versus AC? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Their AC of, I don't know, 10. Well, that's about how much damage she's going to do, too. Is she attacking Ananda, who tried to leash her? Mm-hmm. Who tried to leash her. <laughs> okay. Is she knocking her out or taking her out? 
Let's see. She swings her tail at her in a general direction. And um, let's see. We're going to let the dice decide if she's going to bounce off of something and die. Oh. Uh, that was high. So she's going to hit her head on a pew and die. Okay. Darwin, you've got your other leg free now. It's just trust and holding on to your arm. And Cyril will burrow back down. <sighs> Malcius is a little bit more visibly upset at that one simply because. They were just a member of the church. Yes, they fought, and yes, they will have their reward in Corm's realm. But cool. Fuck that. They got involved. They were warned several times that they were going to get hurt. I have zero sympathy for them. They were. He looks up at you, Finn, again, and I just... I should have expected as much from you and your beast. Well, you could have prevented their deaths if you would have told them to leave and stop fighting a fight that wasn't theirs. If you knew any better, you'd tell the other one to get out of here too before the same happened to him. Their deaths are on your conscience, sir. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He's not going to dignify that with the response at the moment. Maybe later, but not right now. Anything else? Oh, no, it's Cyril's turn. That's our turn, yep. Yeah. Okay. It's Trostin's turn. He's a little concerned about what just happened there. He. Ah, uh, here we go. Darvin, you might have the best view for this, simply because Trostin's right there at your arm. He's probably standing on a pew, and Malsius is right in front of you. Finnegan, you might see Malsius' side of this, but Trostin looks a little worried, looks at Malsius for confirmation of, like, should I stay or should I go? Malsius gives him a comforting look and says, Brother Trostin, whether you receive Quorum's grace today or sometime in the future, you will have it. And then, because he is a villain, I know I tried to give him some sympathy for being against the obligate mortality, but I don't want you to forget that Malsius is a bad guy. He will say, you will receive Corum's reward when you die, whether that is today or at some point in the future. But these heretics must be taught their lesson. Uh, Trostin stays. And it's going to continue to hold on to Darwin's arm. Darwin, what do you want to do? I guess it's time to attack. What's his name? Trostin? Yeah, yeah. Trostin. Yeah, half dwarf, half wait, halfling. Wait. wait, wait. Aren't you still in combat with Dew or. Dew's dead. Dew is down. Dew's dead. Dew's dead. Okay. So it's it's yeah. just Trostin and Malsius in front of you? Uh huh. And Trostin's got my arm. Mm hmm. You've got your leg and your sword, though. Yeah. If you want to go after him, go after him. Yep. Let's do it. All right. First attack, leg sword. So 18. That hits. 16 damage. God damn. Shit. Are you killing him? Uh-huh. Okay. Don't forget your temps. Oh, yeah. Temp. There is a moment of fear as you cut him, and then a moment of acceptance. Like, ah, yes. Death, I go to Corum. My reward is today. Fucking zealots, man. And then, yes, Darvin, you get temps. Nice. 17 more temps. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now, now I could go after Mousius, right? Yeah, unhindered. Mm-hmm. Okay, so one more one more leg sword attack. Mm-hmm. It's at 25. That hits. For eight damage. I rolled almost minimum. Okay. And now we are going to spend a key point to flurry. Punch, punch. Punch, punch. Punches will be a 27. Yeah, jeez. For 7 damage, almost minimum again. Mm-hmm. And the second punch is an 18. The second punch is not going to hit. Okay, that's all I got. He's too wily. <sighs> Things have turned quickly here against Malsius. Huh. Trying to think which of these he wants to do. Because he hasn't used any of his monk specialty stuff yet mostly because they haven't really applied to what his goal has been and he's felt very comfortable but you all have certainly removed a large amount of that comfort here so okay darvin you hit him good hit him a couple of times he sees Hadi over there still standing but the rest of those who have remained have fallen Additional help has not come yet, which is troublesome. He's going to say, 
Darvin, it pains me to see one of Korm's chosen acting in such a way. You should be on our side. There's so much you can do for us here, for the church and for Korm. Instead, you serve that god and you help that man. He motions up to Finnegan there, the second one. None of you shall leave this place. And he's going to straighten himself up, bring his hands together, focus, and he's going to spend some key points here to use a nice high-level monk ability called Empty Body. And he's going to become invisible. This isn't a casting of a spell. This is just becoming invisible. Uh, you answered my question. <laughs> I knew that was going to be a question because we've got two casters here who might be able to do something about that. Can I, can I ask a question? Yeah. Is it magic, though? Like, I know I can't counterspell it. I'm not going to try. Like, could I, say, dispel magic on it eventually? Or is it just like, I'm ninja, poof of smoke, you can't see me? Hmm. I mean, I want to say it's magic because becoming invisible seems mad. It's not he's hiding, it's invisible. Okay. The way it's worded is become invisible. I mean, I'll abide by whatever you decide because I know that's a weird question, but it's a weird ability too, so. Mm Mm-hmm. And a peek at what Darwin may be able to do in the future. Yeah. Uh, I don't see a quick answer, but I'm going to say it's magic because he's not moved locations. He is invisible for a minute. Okay. So dispel magic. I mean, you'd have to be able to target him first, right? Right. That's the trick. Yeah. Choose a creature, object, or effect within range. I yeah. I'm going to say that means you have to know where that is and not just, I'm going to end any invisibility that's happening around my general vicinity. Right. Because it's not like a 120 foot like sphere or something weird. Mm-hmm, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. He turns invisible. Darvin, he's going to punch you all invisible. This does not break his invisibility. Which you will find out very quickly. 22. Yes. Let's keep going here. 22 again. 26. Jesus. 28. Jesus. All of those will hit. All right. I had a feeling he wasn't going to miss with advantage, so. How much health do you have right now? So I have 17 temps. Okay. And that's it. Well, I have one and 17 times. Right. So I assume so I'm going to use some key points here. There's a good chance of it. Okay. So the first one is for eight damage. Okay. And the next one is for 10 damage, which would drop you to zero, yes? Yeah, so I'm going to use three temps, right? Yeah. Sorry, I mean right. three key points. Yeah, because then it's 14 damage and 14 damage as he is wailing on you while invisible. Oof. Down to four key points. This is getting real. Mm-hmm. Then you can hear his footsteps as he moves away. I guess technically you can take a blind swing at him with this advantage if you want to try to hit him as he moves away. Yeah, it's worth a shot. I mean, you knew he was there. He was punching you in the chest. It's worth a shot. Yeah. I don't care Oof. if this is against the rules or not. This is fun. Just seeing Darwin swinging at nothing. Well, I rolled a one and a four, so... Mm. Swinging at ghosts. Yeah. It's Hades' turn. He's going to continue to press the attack on Aranus. Well, the two is going to miss. How about a 22? That'll hit. And a 24. Yep. 18 total bludgeoning damage. How's your health doing, Aranus? I'm at 42. Okay. And then it's your turn. Okay. Anyone interested in me doing something really stupid? What yes. Are you thinking of doing? So, okay. I know that he's moved away mm-hmm. from Darwin, right? It's safe I to saw assume. Darvin, I saw Darwin swing, and I would assume that he moved away. Is there anybody in this building besides us, him, and Haiti? N- not in this room of this building. No. There's no more innocent bystanders, if that's your question. <laughs> that is my question. So... I'm not just going to outright do this. I want to, like, Shannon the player wants to ask. I am interested 
and basically like filling a section of this room with fire. <laughs> you could 100% do that, yeah. I'm, like I'm down with that. Just like tank like not where Darwin is and like not where Finn is and not where I am, but just like over there. All the, the rest whole, of the room. the whole thing. Well, I don't know how much Minus fire you can make, path but to an exit. Okay. Well, here, let me let me just it consists of 10 10 foot cubes. Is this which wall I can of arrange fire? in any way I wish. It's firestorm. Oh, well, firestorm. So I can arrange them any way I want. It doesn't last. It just like flashes up and then goes away. Mhm. Mhm. But it does ignite flammable objects. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, this sounds like a ton of fun. This sounds real stupid, but I'm assuming that you have an image in your brain of what this building looks like. Yeah. So yeah. I don't want to stack them. I just mm. want to put them all like ground level. I mean, I'm assuming he didn't go up. I guess that's maybe a bad assumption. Are there columns in this building? Not around where Darwin and Malcius were. There's that big statue, but the mm-hmm. only other columns would be near the exterior of the room, probably supporting okay. some other walls and floors and things, but no, okay. not scattered throughout. Okay. All right. Then, yeah, I just want to keep it all at ground level and okay. just like as much of the room that doesn't include us and mm-hmm. a way out for us. <laughs> like, leave a little <laughs> to be able to get out. Well, it's just a flash, so. Yeah, it is. But it does say it that, oh, it damages. Oh, no, it ignites flammable objects that aren't being worn or carried. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All these nice so. books. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Then yeah, that's what I want to do because I've had it up to here with this BS. So I'm gonna completely ignore Haiti and just burn some shit to the ground. <laughs> okay. You know, I'll I'll have Malcius make this dexterity saving throw because yeah, he's a monk. He'll take half damage on a success and no damage on a or sorry, he'll take half damage on a fail and no damage on a success mm. because. Which means all of those hellish rebukes I was doing were a waste of spell slots. Oh, I forgot about that for the hellish rebukes. <laughs> Oops. I don't always think of those like single target things as, oh yeah, deck save applies. I was like, oh, when's the fireball coming? Or like cones. But yeah, let's find out if he makes it out of this unscathed or not. Is this an even stupider idea then? I don't even care. I'm doing it anyway. I don't know. You'll hear it. You'll probably hear him react if he catches fire. It'll be a nice little ember outline. Let's see. Let's roll some dice first. Fuck. All right. Yeah, he failed. Nice. He'll take the half damage because of the cool monk ability. But pay attention, because there's about to be a emberous outline of a man. There's a oh, there's three fucking ones in here. They're all ones. And twenty. 28. Is that the full damage? Yes. Okay. Fuck. I rolled three goddamn ones. So there's this huge burst of flame in the whole front half of this main hall. Darwin, the flames are just right next to you. You see books and hymnals and whatever catch fire. And about 20 feet away from you, Darwin, 20 feet in front of you, Standing right at the base of this quorum statue, you see the outline of Malcius catch fire momentarily. Hair singeing away, extra little bits of fluff on the ends of his robes, before the fire dissipates again. And everyone can see right where he is. He's still invisible, but you know where he is at this moment. So, let's see if we can use that to our advantage. Anything else, Arnas? That's my whole turn. Okay. Finnegan, what are you doing? I want to help Arnis because Arnis is our healer. Okay. So I'm going to use my random ray's wand on the dude that's been attacking Arnis. Uh, okay. Let's hit Hades with a wand. And that's a seven, so it's a sleep ray. That can help. Oh, no. <laughs> Make a wisdom save, Hades. <laughs> or he falls asleep. <laughs> Shh. Shh. Please be quiet. This is a nap car. 
and he doesn't get another save. So uh, he'll wake up if he takes damage or if someone tries to wake him up. Or in a minute. <laughs> or in a minute. Or in a minute. Haiti passes out. Sweet. That's my action. From down below, Anything you just hear Arnis go, thank you. <laughs> I'm going to save my bonus action for the next turn because I do have a use of true seeing in my ring, but I don't want to use it now and not have needed it. So I'm going to wait until my next turn to do it. So that is my turn. And then mm-hmm. Cyril will scurry up and see that there are no active violent targets. Mm-hmm. And then run over to stand next to Arnis because the most likely target to attack her would be the one that's asleep. Him would be the one that's asleep. Okay. So we'll bounce over to Arnis. Yep, yep. Staying above ground? Yep. Okay. Wonderful. Anything else from Cyril? She is going to prep an attack in case this dude wakes up. So if he wakes up, she's going to whack him. Okay. Yeah. Good. Good times. <laughs> Good times. Good times. <laughs> Shh, go to sleep. <laughs> Alright. Darvin, you are no longer grappled. Malsi has turned invisible, smacked you around a little bit, retreated, and you saw a fiery outline of where he is for a moment when Arnus let off that spell. It's safe to assume he's still there. He hasn't had his turn. He hadn't had any movement actions. Other than that, Haiti is a is asleep. What do you want to do? I want to go attack where Mausius was and hope he's hopefully still is. Okay. He is still there. Your attacks will be at disadvantage because he is invisible. Gotcha. Okay. Like you know the five foot cube he's in. But I still can't see him. Gotcha. Yeah. Still can't see him. First attack uh, 22. With disadvantage? With disadvantage. Nice. 12 and 18. That'll hit, yeah. For 13. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay, second attack. Ugh, that one I crit filled on. Okay. See a couple of spots of blood on the ground where he's bleeding from the first attack. Keep going? Yeah, one punch. Just one. Saving those those key points. Yep. Ooh, I rolled a 13 this time. Ah, it's also not going to hit. Okay. So. Darvin, as you rush forward and strike at Malsius, still invisible, you do manage to cut him, but not enough to take him down. You can hear his breath. It's heavy and labored, doing his best to control it, but obviously he's been weakened. But before he can attack, the torches in this room begin getting snuffed out. You can hear the shock in his breathing. This is not something Malsius did. The main hall begins to darken and dim. And there's the sound of an opening door. Me. Behind the large statue of Corum, there are the doors to Malsius' office. Further along that wall, there's another door that opens. Arnus, I think you have a great view of this door. Finnegan, from the air, you have a great view of this door. Darvin, by this statue, it's difficult to tell. But a door opens, and there's the sound of footsteps. A few people, actually. And one of them is going to spend some key points to create a magical effect here. And this is a wall of fire. They're not using it to damage anybody. This wall of fire shoots up, almost completely encircling Darwin and Malsius, leaving just a small pathway in. Just a little five foot space. These monks, fairly certain they're monks. It's dark and they're wearing not the normal robes. These look almost more like cloaks or ponchos. Something that's wrapping around them. Arms and torso. They emerge. It's difficult to tell who they are. Especially in this low light. Finnegan, you recognize the voice of the one who speaks up. This is General Nils Virages, who is the celestial that you met at that temple of Yoru some time back, before you joined up with Darvin and Aranus. And in this burning light, you can hear him say, Mr. Tempest, we heard that you were here, and 
while I would love nothing more than to snuff you out now. It appears a gift has been delivered to us. As he looks to Darwin, Malsius remains silent. These people should be coming to his aid, but they aren't attacking Finnegan. They aren't attacking Aranus. Instead, they move to apprehend Darwin. Darwin, you can make an athletics or an acrobatics roll to contest this as they are trying to grab you. Acrobatics. These people definitely know what they're doing way more than Ananda and Trostin. Um, can you give me the number on the die, please? Also a crit. Well, with Darwin's crit, one of them is going to lean forward into your ear, Darwin. Not General Virages. It's a shorter, more slender person. She whispers into your ear, Darwin, best if you just came along peacefully. We only want you. We'll let your friends be. And Nils says loudly for everyone to hear, Malsius, I'm sure you're here somewhere. Frankly, I don't care if they kill you. They can have you. We have far bigger plans for this church and for Darwin. And it looks like the folks with him are going to attempt to grab you again, Darwin. But before they do, from the far side of the room, from the entrance, everyone hears a little, like, squeak, squeak, clap, clap, squeak, squeak, clap, clap, squeak, squeak, clap, clap, like a little wind-up toy. And from the entrance to the church, this small little mechanical bug, like a little firefly crawling along the ground, clapping its wings every few steps. Squeak, squeak. begins marching through and certainly distract Nils and his group. And you can hear a little loop. Which the three of you recognize as Tonks' music. You don't see him, but you hear his music. It's definitely getting closer. And as this music plays, it begins to get cold. This is not Tonks' doing. And snow blows through the room, filling this main hall, dousing that fire and blinding everybody in the flurries of snow as Tonk and Iskra enter the room. When the snow drops, Nils and his group are gone. Darwin, thankfully, still present. And a pair of bloody footprints from Malsius as he retreated away into a different room. And with that, we'll bring this chapter to a close. But the story will always continue. Thanks again to all of our Patreon patrons for your support. If you'd like to become a patron, go to patreon.com slash Podcast and pick out a level that's right for you. Before we go, I'd like to give special thanks to everyone at the $5 and up tiers. At the $5 City Council level, thank you, Shannon DeMello. At the $10 mayor level, thank you, Christopher DeMello. At the $15 governor level, thank you, Phoenix Bryan and Sierra Jones. Thank you for listening to this chapter in Seasons of Skyrend. If you like what you heard, please leave us a five-star rating and review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you find us. If you want to chat, we're on Twitter at Skyrend Podcast. You can join our Discord server, or you can email us at skyrenpodcast at gmail.com. You can also find us online at skyrenpodcast.com. As always, thanks to Daryl Barnes for creating our theme music. You can find them on Twitter at Daryl Barnes underscore. We also want to thank the talented at Gabby underscore Desu on Twitter for our fantastic podcast art. Thanks again for joining us. We'll see you next time on Seasons of Skyrend.